thank you all for tuning in to this online Christmas worship experience. I want to give a big shout out to all the churches involved. Gospel Community Church, Redemption City Church, and Gospel City Church. On the behalf of all your pastors, elders, and staff, we would love to wish you all a Merry Christmas. And we hope that we all get to celebrate this opportunity, the fact that Jesus Christ came to save us. Because in reality, that's what this day is all about. It's not about the sweet smell of peppermint. It's not about who has the best Christmas decorations on their crib. It's not about who has the best food, which is gonna be on fire. It's about celebrating the life of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, which means God with us. So, so in these next few moments, let me encourage you to take these moments of celebration and worship with whoever you're gathered with today and recognize that Christmas is more than just this moment. It's an opportunity for us to celebrate Jesus and understand what that really means to you. So wherever you are and whatever Christmas looks like for you, thank you for allowing us to be a part of it. Christ has come. Let's celebrate that together. Amen.
the beginning of time, God has been writing a story of His love for His people. He created everything for His glory. Adam and Eve walked with God in the garden. They named all the animals and took care of the garden. Everything was good, until it wasn't. They listened to Satan's lies and believed him instead of God. People could not be with God anymore. But God gave a promise, and what a great promise it was. A Savior was coming. Then, when the time was right, in Bethlehem's field, an angel appeared. The shepherds trembled. Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Un unto you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And suddenly they, there were many heavenly hosts praising God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace among those whom he is pleased. The wait was over. God broke the silence with the birth of a baby boy. His name is Jesus. God gave the world the most wonderful gift. In this child, the promise came. The Savior was born. But best of all, through the sacrifice of his life, he made a way to restore what had been lost. Once again, people could be with God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. All come to the Father through him. So we sing to the one who's worth a thousand songs and more. Glory in the highest, glory in the lowest. Emmanuel, Jesus, our Savior. Thank you. 
Merry Christmas, guys. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, brothers. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right, so it's it's Christmas morning at the Hurt House, at the Love House, Clute House. What's the first thing going down on Christmas morning? So the first thing going down is I'm up early, yeah. putting the bacon in the oven. Got to get ready. Bacon. bacon. First thing. First thing. And then we do these cinnamon roll candy canes in the shape of candy canes. It's a tradition that's been handed down from my wife's grandmother all the way down to us. And we do it every Christmas morning. Bacon, cinnamon roll candy canes. It's on. That's part of waking up. Well, we actually wake up with Jesus. Oh, so, that's very so. spiritual. <laughs> Now we, uh, the kids come into our room and we end up opening to Luke chapter two. And the first thing we do is read through Christmas story about Jesus coming. And, uh, my kids always joke that every single year it ends with dad's and yep. dad in tears. So <laughs> that's funny. The first thing we do. So we got, my kids know that they're not allowed to come out of their room on Christmas morning until they hear our Christmas song. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a tradition passed down on my mm-hmm. wife's side too. But they got like 30 days of pent up Christmas energy and they're in their room. We get up, we do coffee and cinnamon rolls. And then when the song Born as the King is our song, when it rings out through the house, the kids know that they can come barreling out of their room and they come down the stairs. They see the presents under the tree. So they're all wide eyed and they're also prideful because they're carrying down their Christmas presents that they're going to give to us and to each other. And so it's usually kind of a fun anticipation moment on Christmas morning. So you do coffee first, so I'm not the only sinner on this panel. Oh, yeah. Hey. You gotta start with, we'll so start I gotta with start with easy. coffee. You gotta start with coffee. Brothers, it's hard. I mean, Christmas traditions, the noise surrounding the holidays. Yeah, how do y'all how do y'all and your families keep Christ like central focus to what you're doing in the midst of everything else that's going on? Yeah, yeah. You mentioned Luke too. Yeah, yeah. So Christmas morning, for sure, we're, we're starting and being reminded like the mm-hmm. greatest gift that we could ever receive was Christ who was mm-hmm. born. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. Uh, mm-hmm. All throughout December, we are usually reading a devotional and then we are reading a story that just has ties into some biblical themes, follows mm-hmm. biblical characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to remind ourselves of of when we come to Christmas Day, it's not about the gifts that we're opening. It is right. it is about remembering our Savior. So that's right. That's cool. We we've grown to love like I didn't grow up really doing Advent or the word Advent wasn't a, a theme in my house. Although we made the season about Jesus always, but it's been cool. Like as a family, we've kind of adopted this theme of Advent where we light the candles each week. And Mm. I I love the anticipation of the season. So Mm. like from the moment after Thanksgiving, when we get our tree, the Christmas season starts and it's like, they're waiting for that day when they'll come barreling down the steps. So we do the same thing. Like we, before we open any presents, we sit everyone down and dad tries to preach a sermon to the kids. (laughs) Always goes over well. (laughs) And they're like looking at the presents and I'm trying to get them to pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I make, we make it about Jesus. We center our attention, try to have a discussion. We're usually finishing up some Advent devotionals and just reading stories throughout the month of Christmas or month of December because we want to make everything that we do about Christ Mm -hmm. and what he came to do ultimately. And so that's kind of how we keep at the center of our house. You mentioned anticipation. I mean, for us as a family, I mean, it's, we, we prayerfully, it's a rollover from the rest of the year, yeah, right. right? So like by the time we hit Christmas, we would have kept Christ at the center of everything, no matter the season, the date, the month, like Christ is central. So for us, like the battle is not going to Starbucks and demanding that they put Christmas back on the cups. For us, it's like, how do we keep Christ in every season of our lives? And hopefully yeah. it's an overflow yeah. to Christmas morning when we celebrate that Christ has come into the world, taken on flesh and to save us. You know? Yeah. Well, all of us here are pastors of congregations and we care for our people and we want to encourage them. So as you think about Christmas season, uh, when you think about Christmas morning, how can we encourage our people? Mm, that's good. Yeah. You know, I, I think uh, the commercialization of, mm. of Christmas Uh, It's the most wonderful time of the year. You see that everywhere and it's supposed to be full of parties and joy and all of the things. Uh, I think that a lot of people in our congregations, just normal everyday life, your circumstances don't change because it's Christmas. And so there's people this year on Christmas Day who are maybe going through loss of a loved one Mm -hmm. or sickness, Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. they've had family members who aren't with them this year because they've moved on in a different stage of life or, you know, your circumstances affect those kinds of things. And so I think for the believer, 
uh, we don't focus on the temporal at Christmas time or at any point in life. We have faith in what we can't see. And it makes me think of Galatians chapter four. Uh, it says, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And verse seven says, so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Mm-hmm. And I love the thought that, that, you know, whether you're in a hard season right now or a waiting season mm-hmm. or a joyful season on this Christmas day, God is always on time. He's not That's usually right. early, not late. He's always on time. And, mm-hmm. and when Jesus came the first time, it was at the right time mm-hmm. and he will come again. And so we have this hope that God sees us. God is with us. God is always watching and God will mm-hmm. send Jesus into the world again. And so we can, can, as much as we hope in what Christ already did, right. we anticipate that he will come and do it again. Yeah, I like to I like to dive into the name of, of Jesus. Like he, he received a name, the scripture tells us, Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So, and thinking about Christmas, like the name of Christ reminds us that we are free from our sins and transgressions. You know, you talked about it, Micah, like the different spaces people find themselves in. Some people are rejoicing. We rejoice with those who rejoice. Some people on this morning, they're weeping. And so we weep with those who weep. But regardless of wherever the Christian finds themselves on Christmas morning, this morning, we, we all sort of open up an empty box from God. And what I mean by that is imagine, you know, God gives each of us us who are believers a gift on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. And outside of that box, it says wrath of God, condemnation of God, judgment of God. And as Christians, we open up that box and it's completely empty. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Christ took all of that on our behalf. So all of us Christmas morning, we open up an empty box of God's wrath. And so it's it's rejoicing, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, I don't, every Christmas, I don't know about you guys, there's this sense afterwards where if I am focusing too much on the temporal mm-hmm. things, uh, there's just these Christmas blues, post-Christmas blues, yeah. where it just never satisfies if we That's are right. looking at it from the temporal. Yeah. And one of the things that, uh, why I get so emotional when I read that Christmas story to my kids out of Luke 2 is because I'm not thinking about baby Jesus, right? We don't, mm. we don't pray to baby Jesus. That's we right. pray the, to the crucified, resurrected Christ. That's right. Right. That's right. And I'm reminded of Philippians 2, verse 5. It says, adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who existed in the form of God, did not con- consider equality with God as something mm. to be exploited. Mm. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. Mm. And so when I, when I think of uh, mm. Christ being born and I think of what that baby would grow, would grow up to do, I mean, that just uh, all, all the more makes the season joyful That's to right. consider, mm. you know, what you said, like he's going to die for our sins wow. so that we no longer have to face the wrath of God and we are free in Christ. And so no matter what gifts we give, we've already been given the greatest gift that we could ever receive. And so the the greatest thing that we can do is remember the gospel, right? Like every day, it's no different on Christmas. It's it's all the more magnified for me. And I always get the picture in my head of Mm. like a Christmas tree with the shadow of a cross. Like that's what it represents. It represents what Christ did for us. That's good. It's all to the praise of his glory Mm. and grace. And so I think it just deflects glory back to God Mm. when we focus on the real reason for the season. Amen. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Are you ready? Here we go.